first speaker is Chi uh, Ling Wang, and uh, he's going to talk about quantum teleportation. Thank you. Uh, I, I'm Chi Ling Wang from USTC, and uh, today my talk is about uh, quantum teleportation of multiple of multiple degrees of freedom of a single photon. And uh, uh, this talk is based on our recent nature paper. And uh, I'm in the multi-photon entanglement group uh, in Hefei. And uh, uh, our group PI is Professor Chuan Lu. And uh, our center director is Professor Jiang Yun Pai. And uh, uh, this is our group, uh, uh, our member photo. And uh, it's me. <laughs> <laughs> what are you guys doing there? Uh, CS. CS. And uh, now we start a brief introduction. Uh, start from teleportation. And teleportation is familiar for everyone here. And it's uh, the ability to transform from one place to another place. People try to uh, carry out uh, teleportation. One stretch is to measure the properties of the objective and uh, re reproduce it uh, remotely. However, this stretch has some problems. Uh, the first problem is uh, uh, simultaneously precise measurement of two properties are forbidden by the uh, by one principle of quantum me me mechanics. The Heisenberg uncertain principle. If we cannot uh, <coughs> measure two properties, what about uh, one property? Uh, the answer is still no. For example, let's consider this uh, the polarization state of a photon. Trying to measure this state will make it a class, and we can only get partial information with one measurement. If we want to get the full information, we need several copies and make several measurements. So uh, we could, uh, but it's forbidden by quantum non collinear theorem. So we have this conclusion. We cannot teleport an object by measuring the properties of the object precisely and reproduce it remotely. Uh, the teleportation turned to be possible in 1993 with quantum entanglement. Uh, this PR paper is very famous and uh, it has been cited by more than 10,000 times. And it has become one of most uh, classical protocols in quantum science, quantum science in vision science. And this is uh, the simple math. Uh, I think uh, everybody f is familiar with this. And uh, two necessary conditions. The first is uh, uh, EPR source of quantum entanglement, and uh, the second is uh, a measurement or bare state measurement. Uh, let's uh, first uh, uh, focus on the quantum entanglement. If we shine a strong UV laser on a BB crystal, there is a tiny property a UV photon will split into two infrared photons, which are entangled. And uh, this is very famous paper. And we can further combine these two photon pairs into multiple uh, multi-photo entanglement using the methods of quantum eraser. And so far, <coughs> we have managed uh, to produce uh, uh, six photon and uh, eight photon. Uh, entanglement, photo entanglement, and uh, five photo 10 qubit uh, hyper entanglement. Uh, for review, please see this real uh, modern physics paper. Uh, being able to control a few individual photons provides a very nice workhorse for proof of principle demonstration uh, of basic uh, components of quantum computation, such as uh, Schroeder's algorithm and the quantum error correction or quantum simulation or recently uh, solving systems of linear equations or quantum artificial intelligence uh, intelligence okay the second condition is about quantum measurement 
for two qubit system, uh, system uh, it can be used this for computational basis. Also, we can use another uh, uh, computational basis, bare state basis. And uh, the bare state measurement will distinguish one bare state from the other three. For example, we can use the BS to accomplish this. And uh, uh, use, uh, we have a quantum entanglement and uh, bare state environment. So we can carry out the first uh, experimental re re realization of quantum teleportation. Uh, this is a great achievement. It has been elected as uh, a celebration of Felix in one century. And uh, from that on, many experiments were carried out uh, to demonstrate uh, quantum teleportation in various systems, such as photons, atoms, ions, and solid state systems. Uh, these blue, uh, blue, letter, uh, blue papers are from Professor uh, Frosawa, and uh, these red papers are from Pan's group. Uh, for example, in 2005, 2005, they implanted uh, open destination teleportation. And uh, in 2006, they uh, teleported uh, two photon composite systems, and uh, including their quantum correlation. And in 2012, they, they implemented quantum teleportation between remote atomic ensemble quantum memories. Besides, in PAN group, they also implement a free space long distance calibration. Uh, for example, in 2010, uh, they <coughs> calibrated over 16 kilometers. And in 2012, they calibrated over 100 kilometers. Uh, however, there's a common fundamental limitation for all previous uh, quantum calibration. They only transform one degree of freedom. It's well known that particles have many degrees of freedom. For example, photo. Photo has a degree of freedom frequency or polarization or orbital angular moment. So one question may be asked. Could we make teleportation to UFs? We try to do this. And uh, we first we should select uh, two DOFs. The first DOF is SAM, or polarization. Uh, this DOF is mostly used to encode qubits, and uh, can be easily manipulated by uh, polarizers, or wave plates, or PBS. The second DOF we chose is uh, orbital angular moment of photo. It uh, results from a special distribution of phase, a helical phase, helical phase. And it has the form of this. And I um, is top topological charge because it can be uh, designed by, uh, as any entangler. So, uh, OAM can construct a Hilbert space with infinite dimensions. Uh, and uh, how to know OAM? OAM can be transformed to micro uh, particles and make it uh, uh, orbital rotation. And the SAM make it uh, spin rotation. Uh, one question may be asked, why OAM? Because First, uh, OM is interesting and useful. Uh, it, in many scientific realms, such as uh, optical manipulation and uh, optical communication and astronomy, and uh, there are uh, some uh, very, very useful review papers and books for OM. Uh, in quantum information science, OM also have attracted much attention. For example, this science paper in project group uh, reveal uh, the <coughs> angular OM 
where uh, correlation <coughs> correlations. And uh, this science paper in the linear group, uh, they uh, have created the quantum entanglement of uh, the current uh, most uh, high mo high momentum. And uh, also use OM, they uh, have created uh, 100 plus uh, 100 product 100 dimensional quantum entanglement. Uh, also, uh, OM uh, will result in some uh, very useful uh, functions in quad group. Uh, they have using the OM and the polarization hyper entanglement to beat in the uh, ca channel capacity limit for super, uh, super dense coding. Uh, the second reason to choose OM <coughs> is that there are several technologies for flexible manipulation of OM. Uh, the first is special face plate. A special face plate could make the conversion between OM mode and uh, fundamental Gaussian mode. Uh, another very useful OM element is the Q plate. It can transfer the angular momentum from spin to OM. The third powerful element uh, to control OM is the hologram. We can use special light modulator or SLM to generate arbitrary hologram, so it's very useful. I have a question about the Q plate. Could you go back to the Q plate? So this, this changes spin to OAM? Yeah. Can you change OAM back to spin? Yes. Cool. And uh, the third reason to choose OAM, uh, to choose OAM is that uh, we have mastered the OAM technology. During my PhD, I focused on the collision control of optical fields, including SAM and OAM. Uh, these patterns are typical results for optical vector fields. I also use this field for optical manipulation. And this work are done during my PhD. Um, after we chose uh, two DOFs, one SAM, one OM, what are challenges for this new telepage? First, the uh, protocol. In our, in our telepage, the state to be teleported is encoded in two DOFs. This product, protocol must be updated. We need a uh, hyper entangled uh, photon, uh, photon pairs and uh, have entangled the bare state environment. Request one, uh, have entangled the uh, photo pairs. And uh, uh, this can be done by polarization entanglement by type one. And uh, in type one, the OM is uh, conserved. So type one could also be used to generate OM entangled photo pairs. So to ad adjust type one video crystal, can be used to generate hyper-entangled uh, pairs, hyper-entangled uh, photon pairs. The second is uh, hyper-entangled bare state environment. Uh, previous quantum teleportation needs to distinguish one from uh, the other three. Now we need to distinguish one from the other 15. This is a real challenge. Uh, and uh, we uh, made some choice. The first try is we done one, one by one. First, uh, we carry out uh, the SAM based measurement, then OM based measurement. Uh, for SAM based measurement, we can use PS or PBS to, uh, to do this. Uh, for OM based measurement, there is no such protocols. We need to develop it. Uh, fortunately, we found that we can carry out an OM based data measurement with a beam splitter. And these are uh, best details. Uh, we can di distinguish omega minus uh, from the other three. Uh, now, both the SAM and the OM based data measurement are ready. Let's go try to this stretch. We can construct uh, two inter interferometers 
uh, with one PBS and one BS. Now the question is, can we achieve the hyper-entangled bare-state environment by <coughs> cascading these two interferometers? The answer is no. Uh, looking, at, uh, sorry. looking at this, uh, because after the first uh, interferometers, there are three conditions. One, uh, each, photo, uh, uh, each output uh, mode has one photo, and the other is two photons come to uh, one way. Uh, and uh, and uh, the cascading of these two interferometers has one condition because two input photons are from different passes. So two and three are noise in, in this uh, stretch. And this is also the, uh, this two photo effect is also an uh, important problem in linear optical quantum information process. And uh, our, this result is also in, uh, is agree with previous uh, is agree with previous uh, theoretical work from quite the group. They said that it's impossible to discriminate the hyperentangled state with just a linear optic uh, with just linear optics. So how to overcome this? Uh, QND. With the aid of uh, quantum non dimension environment, we can overcome this. Quantum non dimension is seeing a single photo without destroying it or not altering its quantum information. We found that quantum teleportation itself can be used as a tool for QND detection. So, in principle, we can add uh, another. OM entangled photo pair to implement, uh, to implement the hyper entangled bare state environment. And uh, based uh, on the above analysis, we have the experimental scheme as shown here. Uh, we have the bright uh, hyper entangled photo source, and uh, we can carry out the hyper entangled bare state environment in a step by step manner. First, second, and third. Uh, so, together, so we can teleport a composite spin orbit photo, photonic state now. This is our experimental setup. Each block has its own function, uh, labeled here. And uh, three photon pairs are generated in the first uh, uh, photo pair. Photo one is used to uh, encode the quantum state, uh, the quantum state to be teleported. The second photo pair, two, three, is the uh, hyper entangled photo source. The third is uh, four, five is the OM entangled photo pair used for the for the QND. And uh, this experiment is six photon, uh, eleven qubits. And uh, we, uh, we should note that in the previous uh, OM uh, experiment, the photos are limited to two, and uh, our this is six. And uh, this is uh, uh, the verification of hyper-entanglement, uh, hyper-entangled bare state environment. Uh, one, two, three. And uh, these are uh, uh, experimental results. Uh, we first uh, teleport the four product states. Uh, these are fidelities. Then, second, uh, we teleport a uh, hybrid uh, entangled state, uh, the entanglement uh, between SAM and OAM. Uh, this is the summary of our experimental results. The fidelities of all teleported uh, states are beyond the uh, uh, zero point four. Uh, this is a classical limit. For the entangled state, the fidelity exists the, the threshold of zero point five, uh, which verifies the presence of entanglement. And our paper submitted uh, uh, on uh, September thirtieth uh, and accepted in four months. Uh, it was a uh, paratetal and. Uh, 
Uh, our paper was reported by Professor Wolfgang T. Titel in News and Wheels. And uh, after the calibration, what's next? Uh, first, we can do more for quantum calibration. For example, three or more DOFs. Uh, two DOF needs six photons. And uh, in our paper, we also give us scalable scheme. And the three DOFs needs 10 photons. <coughs> 10 photon entanglement uh, is achieved, uh, will be achieved in near future. And the second uh, for quantum calibration is active fade forward. We can use two uh, swap gates and uh, two UMs to achieve this. Um, the two UMs is used for polarization active fade forward. We can also do more creative research by controlling multiple DOFs. For example, uh, 18 qubits uh, hyperentanglement uh, in uh, 2010, we have generated a file photo 10 qubits entanglement. Now we are planning to uh, carry out uh, 6 photo 18 qubits entanglement using 3D, 3D <coughs> polarization, spatch, and uh, OM. And this 18 qubits entanglement will be useful for uh, quantum computation or quantum simulation. Uh, another uh, very useful is special functions. Uh, using uh, two DOFs, we can uh, make a complete uh, uh, SCM bare slit environment to this discriminate uh, four bare slits. And uh, also use spin and uh, uh, orbital angular momentum, we can have the element free function. Oh, that's all. Thank you. Nice talk. Um, I, I want to try and understand a point that somehow escaped me. And so I, you know, I understand um, what, what I don't get with the OAM state, so I think of them as a QDID, is whether you can you have a universal set of operations. So I understand you're generating entangled states. Yeah. Um, can you prepare uh, um, can you can you prepare any state? <laughs> You know, like the QDID version of a Hadamard, that kind of thing? Yes, I can get your point. Uh, in fact, uh, OM can construct a, a huge hybrid, hybrid space. Uh, however, in, in, our, in our experiment, we just use, uh, use it as a qubit. Qubit or QTRIP? Qubit. Plus one, minus one. Can, and can you create? Can do you have? What, how would you make a superposition of plus one and minus one? That's easy. Because of the spin angular momentum conversion. Right? No, no. You you can do it directly using a mod sender with a dub prison in it. So you can convert, make any superposition of plus one and minus one. Yes. Uh, and then we can use this this element. Uh, yeah, you dub prison? Uh, spiral phase plate uh, is co uh, conversion between zero mode to plus one or minus one mode. And this binary phase plate can generate the uh, superposition of minus one and plus one. Okay, but if you go to high, okay, here's another question then. So with spin, it's very nice because the physics promises you that it's, if it's spin half, your Hilbert space is two dimensional. But with angular momentum, orbital angular momentum, you're no longer promised that. Are there leakage errors into higher dimensions? Is that a problem? Uh, you mean to construct a QD or? What I'm saying is that you know when you have spin, mm. it's up or down, mm. and nothing else is allowed by the laws of physics. Mm. When you get orbital angular momentum, mm. you're allowed any orbital angular momentum. Mm -hmm. 
You know, it's like Fox states, you know, mm -hmm. you can always go higher. Mm -hmm. So is there a leakage into the higher dimension? How do you know it doesn't take place? They use uh, SLM or hologram to create the uh, high order OM model. And uh, the limitation of of the, the OM model is by the technology limit limitation. Okay, but so you're saying then that you guarantee there's no leakage to higher dimension because the hologram design yeah. doesn't allow that to happen. Yes, yes. Okay. And, and, and it's linear. Momentum is concerned. Right, right. right. So it's if you, it's, you can't go to another. Angular right. momentum is conserved and it would be a mode coupling. So to con convert one mode to the other, I mean, I think you would need a nonlinearity of some sort. So. Yeah. So they are uh, and, and in, uh, in their work, uh, the OM mode is 300 in this work, just using SLM to convert the spin to OM. And any other questions? Okay, thank you. So when you do the teleportation, do you teleport all degree of freedom to the other side? Uh, we just uh, two, two degrees. Two, two degrees yeah. and uh, two photons. Uh, one photon. One photon. One photon, two degrees. Yes. Yeah. Next, uh, we would like to type the three degrees. Uh, one photon. Yeah, one photon. Okay. <coughs> yes. Yeah. So, uh, so it's so you say that you have so you have 300, that Zeilinger uh, paper. Yes. So you, you have converted it using an uh, SLM to yes. 300, right? But then how, how do you know it's perfect? I, mean, the, I think that's taking on Barry's question again. That how do you, how do you, there is no error analysis in this entire thing. I mean, it's just perfect. That's yes, yes. That's yeah. our question. Um, yeah. <coughs> that's our problem. Uh, they, they, they just uh, confirm that by the uh, hologram projected on the SLM. And this is designed by a computer. And in computer, you, you input uh, L equals 300, and uh, they believe it's uh, 300. So when you input L equals 299, and, and then project, so uh, there's no overlap between these two? Uh, Suppose oh. you try to just change it a little bit, instead of changing from 1 to 300, which of course is very different. Uh, yeah. they, they change it from 0 to 300. That's correct. 0 to 300 is, is a big leap. But then suppose you do 299 to 300, there won't be any overlap between what you see on the SLM in the two cases. I mean... In, in fact, they use this to uh, for pre precise angle measurement. And uh, they can see the, uh, the sine, sine curve. And uh, they can confirm the, this number by the uh, period of same curve. Thank you. Any other questions? Uh, if not, uh, let's thank uh, uh, 